Hi, this is Mark Train here. I had a question come in asking me how to do non-destructive editing for multiple images in Photoshop and didn't want to take the time to do a high quality video with good audio and and cuts and everything so I apologize you're gonna see uh, just raw with all the weights and everything included. Uh, I want to show real quick the workflow just for one image. It's easier to explain that way. Okay, so um, I'm in Lightroom in the library module. I have a DNG, which is a, a raw file. It's been converted to DNG. You can see that it has some edits done to it. I'll hit D to switch to the develop module. Hit uh, the backslash button, see the before and the after. You can see that I've done some basic adjustments to get the exposure up a little bit. You can see some of the uh, some of the adjustments that have been done. Let's do a brush right here on the neck, make it a little bit a little bit warmer. Okay, so you've made those adjustments, and they are saved in the in the uh, metadata inside the DNG. And you want to work on this in Photoshop because you've gotten just about as far as you can with this image. So right click, edit in, open as smart object in Photoshop, and it'll open with a layer that has a little icon telling you that it's a smart object. So you'd go through once it opens, and I have my I have Lightroom set up to export as Pro Photo, but Photoshop is set up to accept sRGB. Um, it's too hard to explain why I'm doing that, but basically I have it set up so I have to choose when I start it off. So this is for my own personal work, so I'm choosing Embedded, which is Pro Photo. It's a little large of a color space but a little bit more complicated of color space management. So here's that layer, here's that that um, smart object, normal workflow, run an action. This is just a, a high pass option action as a couple pauses built into it. Just a couple of my normal, um, normal actions just to show you kind of why you would do some of these things in Photoshop. So let's say he, you know, hadn't shaved as much as he shaved earlier in the day. You want to get rid of some of this. So I'm going to come over to my brush dialog using the high pass filter and just kind of brush uh, some of the stubble away and some of the uneven skin tones here away. Okay, but it keeps all the detail of the skin. There's a little bit of discoloring right here on the cheek. I'm gonna brush that away. Okay. Now that's kind of kinds of the things I would do. And then um, let's do something drastic just so we can see it later on, something I wouldn't normally do. Okay, so that's on the layer in Photoshop. Now to show you that I still have access to all of the edits I did in Lightroom, you can see those edits in the, that were in the basic dialog box in Lightroom are all right here. And what about the, the edits that I did um, with brushes and all that stuff, including that, the one I did right at the end, same quick key, uh, K will get you to the adjustment brushes. You can see here's that last um, brush I did right on the 
the neck because she wasn't getting the light from the flash. It was a little bit more, uh, more blue. So those are all the edits that I did. I can, I can get rid of that. Um, I can add more if I want to add more. So it's completely non-destructive. And the most uh, important thing, for me at least, um, you can see that it's still, the temperature scale is still in Kelvin. So I'm still looking at that raw data. So when you're done with those, any other adjustments you want to do to the raw, the base layer, um, then you just click OK. Now the downside of this process is that some of this work you do on the other layers, uh, because this is a smart object, you may have to redo some of this work. So you basically have to work in order. But the important thing is, is that it is non-destructive in terms of being able to go back to what you had right here start with. So it's pretty simple workflow. I have this um, this file right here I'm working in Photoshop. I just hit save. That's all I do. So I hit Command S on a Mac, Control S on a PC, and then I can close that file. And then in Lightroom you can see hit G to go to my grid view. And you can see that I have the file that I was working on, the DNG. And sitting right next to it is the Photoshop file. Presumably, that's the higher, that's the one you like the, the like more. So um, I forgot forgot my flag, my stacking uh, button, but I'll, uh, I'll put that in the comment there. But I would normally hit the button to stack those, stack these two. There it is, group into stack. So that one should go behind that. I'll figure out why that didn't work um, later. But important thing is that now you can, if you want to redo any of those changes you did in Photoshop, you still have the option. Now you do edit in Photoshop. You don't do smart object for the second time. And you go back, edit original. Same dialog will open. Still using Photo, And now here's the Here's the TIFF with all the layers, including all of the work I did in Photoshop. And the work I did in Lightroom is still there. And now I can hit save and come back out to Lightroom and it's updated the file and I have Lightroom's capabilities as a digital asset manager handle all my files and the full strength of Lightroom at my fingertips and the full strength of Photoshop at my fingertips.